What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today we are going to be talking about the Sony FX3 and why you probably shouldn't buy it. Let's get right into it. When I learned that Sony was going to be adding a brand new cinema camera to their lineup at a more affordable price point than the FX6, I was very excited. Is this the a7S III we all wanted? Is this our dream video camera? And now we have the answer to that question, and the answer is no. This is literally the exact same camera as the Sony a7S III. And I'm not kidding about the exact same camera. This camera is literally the a7S III in a different body. It has the same sensor, it has the same ports, it has the same card slots, it has the same IBIS, it has literally everything in the a7S III is the same as this body. It's the, it's the exact same internals, it's the a7S III rehoused into a more ergonomic cinema body. That's it. And there's nothing wrong with rehousing the a7S III in a cinema body. They practically did that for the FX6, so clearly it's an amazing camera. However, if you're going to rehouse it and charge a premium and call it a cinema body, there needs to be more dedicated video features and not just a simple coat of paint on it. And that's where I think this camera fall short because this camera lacks DCI 4K, it lacks true 24p, it lacks the ability to do shutter angle instead of shutter speed, and the biggest omission for me, which was a big deal breaker, was the lack of an internal variable ND like we see on the rest of the cinema lineup. And I feel like that one feature alone would have pushed enough people to sell their a7S III or just buy the FX3 because that feature alone is so, so helpful. And that's what we really, really wanted in a cinema a7S III and we didn't get it. So now we just have a rehoused a7S III that's literally identical. There's, there's no benefit to it. So what's this rehousing do? You have different ergonomics and depending on the kind of shooting you're doing, that could be beneficial for you, but I think most people aren't going to really care that much. And then you also have that XLR top handle. So for some shooters that could be really beneficial because since there's no EVF on the FX3, you can add this top handle on, you get that XLR attachment. And for me, that makes it more of a cinema camera since you can attach XLR cables to it. But the fact that it's in a top handle and not on the body seems a little bit weird, but I know a lot of cinema shooters love having that top handle and being able to put the XLR ports on that top handle is pretty beneficial and it works out and it's still a relatively small body and build overall so you know it's all right the other big addition to the fx3 is the fact that this has a dedicated fan this is something we haven't seen on the rest of the mirrorless lineup from sony and it's really no surprise because the overheating issues aren't really there so I haven't had any overheating issues with my S3. I know a lot of other people haven't unless they're shooting some extreme stuff at 120 frames per second for hours. But, you know, just adding a fan to a cinema body does just add to that reliability. And it's a nice perk and it doesn't seem very loud. So that's that's a good addition. But again, I don't think it's enough to separate from the S3. So the FX3 for me reminds me a lot of the Sony a7C. You know, that camera came in at a higher price point than the a7 III, which was arguably a better camera. And now the FX3 is coming in at a higher price point than the exact same camera, the S3. The Sony a7S III comes in at $3,500, whereas the FX3 comes in at $3,900. So there's a $400 disparity between the two bodies that are literally identical, that you're going to be getting the same image out of, and it's just kind of hard to recommend the FX3 when the a7S III exists, because it's literally the exact same camera. Now, I know the comment section is going to be saying the FX3 has S Cinetone, clearly it's more of a cinematic camera. Sony has already confirmed in an upcoming firmware update that the S3 is going to be getting S Cinetone, so that renders that point moot. And also, I feel like most people, especially cinematic shooters, are going to be shooting S-Log3 because of the better dynamic range and the more flexibility offered in post. So s Cinetone, even though it's a nice offering, I feel like many real shooters aren't going to be using it unless they're shooting a very specific need. So the FX3 by no means is a bad camera. It's just hard to recommend when the exact same camera exists at a lower price point and does the exact same thing. I will say that the feature that I really wanted on the S3 that is on the FX3 are tally lights. There are three tally lights around the body of the FX3. So that's really helpful. So you know when you're recording and so does talent. So that's really, really helpful. But again, that $400 disparity, I don't think offers enough 
for people to sell their current a7s3 and buy the fx3 or if they're debating between the two upgrade to the fx3 because it's not offering that much more now if you were going to buy the a7s3 with the xlr adapter you might get the fx3 because you would be saving a couple hundred bucks but it's just this camera for me is in a very weird position because the s3 exists and then the fx6 exists but it's much closer to the a7s3 in terms of performance and everything like that so it's just a weird camera for me and i don't know what to make of it but i want to know what you guys think are you excited about this camera do you, are you mixed about this camera do you wish it had the variable nd what do you think it would have taken for you to sell your a7s3 and buy this camera I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. My name is Mark Steiner, and I'll see you next time.